How's it everybody? Welcome back to The Rocky Fern. My name is Luca and I have OI Type 4. And in today's episode, we're gonna be doing a little bit of plant chores. I got uh, some cactus seedlings I'm gonna replant, kind of redo my little succulent shelf. So uh, let's get into it. You can see here that I have a uh, little pot of seedling astrophytum. I believe, oh, this is Capricornus, but um, out of all these seedlings, only this guy has thorns, has spines rather. And uh, I'm having a lot of issues here with my camera. Not sure what's going on. So hopefully it doesn't keep causing issues. Otherwise I'm gonna probably not get a video out. But anyway, I was saying my sister, she works in the medical field. She's an amazing, amazing hospice employee. And uh, I mean, I just gotta give her hats off to her because she does some of the hardest work I think exists. Um, and she does it beautifully. So shout out to my sister. And uh, let's see here. I'm trying to get all these loosened up. I don't know if you guys can tell, maybe I'll zoom in like that. There we go. There we go, that's better. Okay. So I'm slowly trying to get these seedlings out of here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight seedlings. Astrophytum is such a cool genus. I think there's like 10 different species. Could be wrong. Um, but what's cool is you can find them here in the United States. Um, Southern Texas has quite a few. Nice, nice root system on those. Very cool. Just keep tugging at these till they come apart here. Um, a few more updates. I do have that Aeroid House. Um, is it Aeroid Asia? I think it's Aeroid Asia. Uh, Hoya import that should be shipping this week. Um, it did ship in um, a couple months ago, but it was caught in ag and destroyed due to pests. So that was unfortunate, but we will hopefully be getting a second chance here and a much better result. Very cool Hoyos on that one. It's almost exclusively Hoyos with one skin dapsis. So that's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, this is the one that has the spines on it. Very cool. These guys are grown under LEDs. Um, yeah, and they do really well. So I'm gonna be using these square dishes here. Put a little pumice in the bottom to kind of act as a filter for all the soil. The soil is, is I'd say 80% um, onyx sand and stratum mixed with 20% cocoa coir. And of course you can see some of the pumice in there from just from other earlier projects, but I think I'll, I'm gonna leave it kind of like this to give them a chance to, uh, to kind of grow underneath the lip of the pot. And then I'll top dress with some more pumice. So let's see what I'm gonna do here is kind of create a little, little channel and just pick the first seedling, put him in there. Hopefully you guys can see that, there we go. Maybe I'll keep them raised just a little bit to account for the top dressing. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but he's he's raised quite a bit. I might fix that autofocus a little bit. Okay. All right. Then what we'll do is top dress him. And I think against the white background of the top dressing, these cactus will look pretty pretty cool once they get a little bit bigger here. Yeah, I like that. And then you guys can see that. That's pretty cool. Uh, seedling is getting kind of lost in this big, big pot, but it's a very free draining mix. And I hope that it, it does just fine. I like to use these white pots for plants like seedlings or anything that's grown indoors because uh, I can keep an eye on the root system and also 
see how much how they're holding on to water. Um, I don't like to use these outdoors because they grow quite a bit of uh, algae on the sides. So I like to use the black or really opaque ones for outside. Okay, maybe just a little bit firm tap, firm press rather. Take my little hole, next ceiling. And we'll just get them in here. You know, I was kind of worried about not making a video for a couple weeks. I mean, it was on my mind quite a bit, but um, I'm also kind of surprised to see that I was still getting subs. So that's kind of interesting. Um, we got a September favorites coming up. The boys are excited to hop on that video. So that should be edited here and uh, put out by the 1st of October. And um, yeah, September favorites. There's a lot of cool Hoyas that are in blue, which some of those are gonna make the, make the cut. All right. Okay. All right. Oh man, the root systems on these are so nice. Really, really nice root systems. And Cactus Jack, or Bonsai Jack rather, has uh, sends out these metal chopsticks, which I've talked about before. But they're so handy when you're doing seedling transplants because they have that nice broad end and a nice finer end. And that finer end is nice to get the roots kind of daintily placed, but then can tamp the soil around that root crown, or the crown of the plant rather, um, a little bit more effectively with the stubby end. And because I do a liquid feed, um, when I feed my seedlings, I won't be doing a slow release fertilizer, which I typically do, but this one's gonna be really pretty. This has traces of orange and pink against a really nice white spotted background, so that's cool. Okay. do have some very cool cactus that are going to need to be repotted during this video. Um, you can kind of see him right here. This is kind of one of my pride and joys right here. This is my Copiopoa cinerea. If you guys don't know, or if you do know, you guys, um, well, those that do know, know that the cinereas are kind of super hot right now, demanding lots and lots of money. This guy probably right now would be about 225 bucks. I didn't purchase him for that price. I actually kind of lucked out and got him before the big uptick in pricing, but I really do like the Cinerea. They're known for that kind of Glaucus base color with black spines. And uh, yeah, they're just an awesome, awesome looking cactus. And then also his buddy right here, you guys can see him. This is a another Copiapoa. This is a Copiapoa Hypogea, uh, the lizard skin. And let me give you a close up of the Cinerea. Focus. How cool is that? I was going to do the another few cactus, but they're still kind of small, so I don't want to necessarily transplant if I don't need to. And then I think to help s cut down on the length of the video, I'm going to kind of speed through these. So, starting right now. the last one this is the one that has the spines on it and I don't know if it will maintain and keep its spines or if it's going to lose them um, but we'll just have to find out and I think these are going to be future seed stock for me 
Um, I do really like the fact that I've grown them from seed and they've just been with me their entire lives. I like that and they're so pretty. Astrophytum again is such a cool genus. Okay, now what we'll do is, I think this is Astrophytum, this is um, four rib. I don't know um, if it's a hybrid or not, but uh, these guys are actually really cool because they have all kinds of variations. So the one in the center has a ton of that white spotting. And then this guy's completely nudum. This guy's also nudum. And this guy's also nudum, uh, meaning no trichomes, no no spines, no anything. Whereas this guy has a little bit of trichomes and a little bit of spines. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see what these guys turn out. And one thing to note is only two of them are four rib. This is five rib, this is five rib. That may, was a four rib, it developed a fifth rib um, about halfway through its life um, so far. And then this is also a five rib. It started out as a five rib. So pretty interesting, but let's get these guys going. These guys are definitely due for a repot. I kind of push that root ball out here. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Wow. Look at that. It's all roots. Very cool. And I use a very porous mixture on my seedlings, a lot of sand and I just tend to water more. Seedlings do require more water, but uh, they can dampen off pretty quickly. So small pot, something porous like terracotta is great and something very fast straining. And the nice thing is fast straining and fast, or uh, something that's a little bit air, more airy like terracotta gives you a little bit more leeway in watering. You can water more, feed a little bit more of a diluted feeding and as long as it can dry out and, and during the next day, maybe possibly the day after that, you'll be okay. I've never really had any dampen off. Um, so very cool, very pretty, very, very pretty. So hope you guys can see that. But there's five of those. Let's start getting into these bad boys. Um, some of this black onyx sand and stratum came from a freshwater tank that was probably up and running for about almost six years and uh, I took it down and it's all dried out now but there's so much um, nutrition there's so much available nutrient in the in this substrate just due to having a ton of fish and whatnot over the, all those years and so what I have used it on has been great because it's got that fish fertilizer in there along with a bunch of other mulm and different things like that which act as a, a great hummus and uh, for for plants and uh, yeah it's been it's been a great use these uh, four rib astrophytum are a lot bigger so you can definitely see them better but I think against that white pumice background it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome so uh, there's that guy, and uh, we'll just speed through the next four. Okay, so there's the last one. Make sure to put the la label on the last one. That's cool. That's actually a very typical Mario Stigma. Um, four rib so it's kind of cool all right so next one we're going to be doing is the astrophytums the mutants so i don't know if the parents were mutants or if this is a hybrid um, but there's definitely a big mix in here of different things going on so that's kind of cool uh, we have two four five seven of these bad boys um yeah and they're definitely they're not as crowded as the rest were, but I'm gonna repot them regardless. So let's get into that. And the nice thing when you're replanting seedlings is you don't really have to t 
tap them in and all that. I mean, it's a good idea too, but typically because the root systems aren't as big, you don't necessarily have to go through the extra step of tamp tamping them in or slapping them in because it's already pretty much well mixed in the root system. But sometimes, like on some of those bigger seedlings I did earlier, you definitely had to, but all right, let's see, can I get them out? Okay, so some of the issues you get with terracotta, there's always a downside to things, is that the roots will stick to the sides of the terracotta, which is what was happening there, but no big deal, came out. All right, so we get a nice one, two. This guy's kind of cool because he's got a really high wall to him. I don't know if you guys can see that, hopefully. He's taller, so that's kind of cool. Let's see what else we got here. There's one right here. He's kind of more squat. Very cool spiral looking, um, ge you know, ge geometry to him. Jeez. And, all right, let's see. This guy's also kind of a taller one. You watch some of these guy, these um, astrophyton collections, and it's pretty freaking awesome to see the variety. And the really tall ones are with the trichomes, like a bunch of trichomes, like this fella right here. They're so cool um, as they get older. So let's see, we have four, five, seven it is. Okay. I'm going to have to go make up some more soil, so I'll be right back. Okay, nice new batch of soil made up. There we go. All right, push that down, maybe a little bit less. Okay. I will say cactus seeds are some of the easiest to propagate. Oh my gosh. You guys know the plastic that the shrimp cocktail from Costco comes in? It's kind of um, wide and shallow. I use that as a, as a, way, as a means of uh, propagating cactus seeds. And I kind of just go quadrant to quadrant. Um, and then once they're ready to be plucked out, I kind of reseed that area with new seeds um, and it's that's a good method it's been working for me um, but my point is, is that it uh, cactus seeds are so easy to propagate that I really set it and forget it a little romp old pickle action for those of you who remember that feller all right let's do this next one here And it's been so hot lately. Um, it's been kind of nice um, for all the plants, but it's been miserable for us humans, even though we're the ones causing it. So I don't know, hopefully we make it out of this. But uh, anyway, all right, no doom and gloom today. So we are going to speed through the rest of these uh, six leftovers from the mutant and I will be right back. There we go. All right. This one's really cool because there's a ton of um, trichomes on it. You can barely see it against the white pumice. So I, for some reason, really dig that um, transition or that comparison, rather, or the lack of. So that is the cactus and let me see 
this is, you know, the rest of the pumice. It's very cool. All right. Um, so I'm going to do this guy now. This is Astrophytum, Meristigma, uh, Meristigma. But what's really cool about this is um, only three seedlings took out of the batch. These two Meristigma look very typical. Lots of trichomes, somewhat spines. This one has, yeah, same amount of spines. This one's kind of tall and thin. This one's kind of tall and, and more broad. But then we have a weird seed. I'm not too sure what to make of it. It is a double-headed seedling. And I'm going to keep this guy in the soil and try to get these two out. And we'll see what happens. Supposedly this is a mirror stigma, maybe a monstrous form, maybe a random different seed or just a random genetic mutation. I don't know, but that's kind of cool. So the way we're going to try to get these guys out, I think, oh boy, this is going to be very difficult. I think, you know what, I'm going to try to get these guys out this way where we kind of prime out and then I'll backfill against the, the double-headed seedling and see if that helps. All right. If you guys can't tell, I'm still a little bit sick, but the show must go on, I guess. Oh, nope. All right, so obviously we're gonna break some roots. We don't wanna to break too many roots, but we're gonna break some, okay. This guy's ready, oh, okay. And this guy's ready too. Root systems were quite deep. And then even though this guy has been uprooted, we're gonna to try to keep him in here. So I'd like to really accentuate that double head if possible. We'll see. Oop. Kind of backfill him in here. Okay. Then just get the finer stuff to fill in the rest. Okay, I think we did it. Yeah, he's a really cool cactus. I'm not sure what he is, but uh, I miss these guys every once in a while, so I'll end up misting off all the dust that's on him, if you can see that. But we have a uh, one and two heads, so that's pretty cool. All right. So this is the squat Meristigma. You can see it's you know roughly the size of my pinky. Pretty cool, beautiful coloring. Has red, pink, crimson edges along the rib. And uh, really, really pretty. This was also grown in a substrate that consisted of a fish tank substrate that had laterite in it. It was a very heavily planted tank. Um, I bred my rainbows in there, and I bred different Placostomus in there as well, if any of you guys are into fish. I also bred some Neon Tetras, uh, Rummy Nose. For a while there, I was kind of a big fish head. Um, but yeah. Ah, oh, that's cool. He is such a, that's such a pretty contrast, if you can see that. Okay. It's kind of cool to see a whole tray of astrophytum. <laughs> and I grew all of them. That's kind of a proud, proud moment for me. See a whole tray of astrophytum. One of my favorite genus. I think Copiapoa might be my all time favorite, but it's so hard to say. I think you guys can tell in my videos that I have a very hard time narrowing 
favorites down. I, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. Because it's pretty much whatever plant I'm looking at. There we go. And these taller ones can get a lot more top dressing and still look good. So there's this guy, a little bit taller. Let me put the label in this last one. Okay, so I have two more spots. Why don't I do, oh shoot, I don't know what to do. Well, I know for sure I wanna repot this Gymnocalisium, Mihanobichii, the variegated. You can see it's really pretty, but it's just in a little small terracotta pot. So we're gonna get him out of there because he's definitely outgrown the pot. This guy's flowered for me, and what was cool, it's the two different flowers that it's produced. Ooh, really, really good. The two different flowers that it's produced um, came from two different parts of the, the uh, plant. So one came from this variegated red part, and it was a very pretty pink color. I'll see if I can find some footage or some images of that the one came from this darker area and that was a darker flower so it was very very interesting to see how that how it did that uh, definitely lots of roots and what's kind of cool is I got this plant along with its sibling or at least another plant that's a variegated Mihanovichii uh, no roots so I think it was degrafted but then look at these roots. So it's obviously doing very well. A ton of new roots, enough to flower, which I will take. So let's get this guy in. Now, the thing with bigger rooted systems like this, pots like this, you kind of want to get an idea of where the crown is. You got to pay a lot more attention to how the roots get surrounded by the medium you don't want it out you don't want any air pockets and you don't want to compact it too much this guy has more adult spines so ouch normally Mihano Vici is pretty pretty tame to handle which it still is but it's not like a Puntia or a, or a Choya oh my gosh break out the big gloves for that so then what we'll do is we'll tap tap a tappy 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 tap tap a roo okay and then kind of pack it down and this guy's gonna look really cool with a white pumice top dressing I think very cool. This guy is a Thai import, I believe, if I remember right. And uh, people over there in Thailand and Indonesia, man, they, Japan, they do some amazing work with cacti. Uh, they love them over there. I do know there's some drawbacks to importing from Thailand uh, for certain people, mainly those people that live in like the desert southwest where it's super humid, um, because a lot of the strains and variants that they're pick, choosing for or growing for in Thailand are for those that grow well in their environment, which is high humidity, right? So here in Hawaii, these guys do great. I'm mainly thinking of like adeniums, um, whereas they don't do so hot for people who are in a lot less humidity, a lot less humid environment. So anyway, how cool is that? That guy sticks out like a freaking pretty, pretty thumb. So there's that guy. I think I'll put his sister in with that one. Let's get these guys transplanted. Now these are Echeverias, or Echeverias. These are Echeveria Sobalpinas. Man, that guy came right out. Very cool. This guy's kind of cool because he's another uh, he's another split, another uh, dichotomy, dual head seedling. So it's not two seedlings. It's one seedling that grew two different heads that bifurcated. 
so it's very cool uh, he's also going to go into these pots these are going to go outside and so it's a little bit different these guys are definitely big enough now to go in the outdoors these guys i will put some slow release fertilizer on there Ooh, just a little bit and then we'll dig them in here okay get them tapped in these guys are going to be a little bit more difficult to put a top dressing in but worth it i think so what i'm going to do is just kind of get it all on top shake it to kind of get it underneath every leaf kind of lift and plunge lift and plunge maybe even kind of do the old cactomania pokey do i know he didn't invent it i just like to give him credit he's got amazing videos man daz cacti mania super nice fella across the pond um i believe he's a brit that's married to a filipino woman or he's filipino himself but i i think he just speaks philippine filipino maybe tagalog Ilocano, i don't know but anyway mabuhay to you brother and uh yeah there's that guy he's very cool i can't wait to see him grow up bigger i kind of bruised this leaf right here if you can kind of tell there's a little bit of a bruise right there but he'll bounce back quickly let's get these are all seedlings by the way but you can already see a difference they're in need of a drink but you can already see a difference in color and in form and shape this guy is a little bit more sage green. It's coming, coming up really nicely on the camera. This is a little bit more glaucous, a little bit more blue. And this guy just, I believe having bifurcated is smaller because it's putting energy into two different heads. Um, so that's kind of interesting to see. All right, they come right out. That's pretty cool, good mix. A lot of charcoal in this mix, a lot of charcoal and sand. Kind of free up the roots here. Ooh, nice root system. You can see that, that's cool. It's gonna go into a little three inch pot versus a one inch pot. So I think it's a good, good up pot size. Do this. Okay, same thing. Get them in here. All right, then I think what I'll do is I'll fill in with this older stuff for now. I haven't seen any pests at all in any of these seedlings, so that's good. Although what's funny is I keep the same, everything, I keep everything, uh, let's try to rephrase that. Um, what's funny is the plants that I keep on this seedling shelf, um, are mostly succulents, but I keep a lot of my pinguiculas and one drosera. And uh, they do an amazing job at keeping down the, the gnats. I actually haven't seen any fungal gnats um, or pests at all. So it's kind of a cool way to do it. You know, the pinguiculas are a little bit of a higher light plant. They don't require it as much as like drosera do. But the Drosera that I have over there, which is an Adelaide, is kicking butt under those really bright LEDs. So that is probably my favorite seedling. It's just very blue. Very, very pretty, very, very blue. Let's just do a little one, two, tap a -roo. See if we can get things settled in there. And I think now that it's in a bigger pot, it should take off and be much happier. All right, so this is the little bit more sagey green one. It still is white and glaucous. I'm gonna try not to touch the leaves, but of course, in a year's time, all the leaves that we see now will be gone um, as the new leaves take over. And that crown subsequently gets buried. So another great root system on these guys. And I think because these are going outside with other Echeveria, I might, label every uh the three pots you just never know uh very cool okay so before we do that i'm going to mix all this in 
and because there's still some slow release fertilizer in the old stuff I don't think I will put any more on this last the second or last one so just in case you caught that I don't think I'll need to put any on there okay so a little pumice little pumice yep put a little mixture in here okay there's that this is a lot more sandy so it's really hard to actually get the roots in here so I'm gonna have to dump some out go about halfway down push the bottom half of the roots in to the soil kind of spread them out while holding the crown of the plant where I want it and then I'll fill in the rest for any of you guys wondering how to do this this is how I do it and then once you get all four sides in which is kind of how I think of it even though these plants are more of a circle then I'm going to tap in and kind of get everything to fill in just like that there's a really cool shirt I saw I can't remember the company but it says don't forget to slap your plants <laughs> and uh, it's great advice because when you're potting the slapping is very beneficial so I do like the look of this just a more natural look with a dirt background but top dressing is pretty pretty crucial to have get this filled in like that get this guy filled in okay all right look at that do a little tap tap -aroo. got the first echeveria label in let me uh, grab two more labels all right just because they're going outside like i said so this is echeveria subalpina double check that sub Alpina and then parentheses ES Uno and Dos Okay Get these guys in here Nice all right and I think the only, the last two that we're going to repot here um, after I change my battery will be the Cinerea and the Hypogea, the lizard skin. Let's do it. Okay, let's go. All right, so, same thing as before, a little pumice in the bottom there. Let's get this Copiopoa Cinerea going. Um, dissipating big roots. So I'm gonna go. All right, this is one of my pride and joy copia poas. I just think they're so freaking pretty, like everyone else does. Being very careful here to how I pick it up. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that root system, holy cow. That's a cool root system. Look at that, oh my gosh. Cool. Very, very cool. Oh, this makes me so happy. Look at that, okay. Being very careful here. Okay. Bring this back in the frame and do the old shaka shaka shaka. Fill that side. Fill this side. And then, as I jiggle it, I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Keeping in mind that we're going to put a top dressing on this bad boy. All right. And start to tap her in here. Yeah. Oh, she's so pretty. Okay. 
and then I'll put the label in before we top dress it with some hummus. And a little bit more. All right. Okay. What do you guys think of that? Very cool. And then we're just going to do the old tappa tappa tappa. Kind of get those roots in here. I kind of want to orient it more like this. A little bit more pumice in here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's very pretty. Very cool. And now we'll do the old hypogea. Hypogea, hypogea, however you want to say that. Okay, mix that in. The old soil here. Okay, let's get this guy going. This guy's a lot less thorny than the Cinerea is. And smaller root system too, not sure why, but that Cinere had a robust root system. Oh, this is pretty rocky is why. It's pretty compact feeling. I wonder if it had a hard time bringing through those, that soil. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, look, there's a very hard clot right there. The plant had to form around that rock. Okay, that's good to, in, interesting, good to know. Stuff you look, the, the stuff you notice, I should say. Okay, uh, this guy's also going to get a tag because these printable ones fade even under the LEDs. So I think that's interesting. Notice the smaller root system, so we don't have to go as shallow. I'm not going to do the same thing. Okay, we're going to put it in like this. Then we'll fill in. Okay, now I know this soil mixture that I'm using looks very rich, but like I said, it's mostly onyx sand and stratum, which is black. And then it has about 20% cocoa coir. So it's mostly inert medium. Okay, let's get this guy a little bit of Okay, and we'll do the old taparoo here. Trying to settle them in, firm them in pretty good. And uh, yeah, I was gonna say it looks like there's a pup growing, but I don't know if that is. What's kind of cool is that I have a Chorifantha elephantoides, the Enermis, that popped like 10 times. And I think those pups will end up being enormous as well, so that's kind of cool. All right, let's get him some top dressing. Kind of lean him back so that the top dressing gets underneath. Act as a nice little barrier between him and the soil, like that. There is a loaf of fora. I think it's I think it's William's eye lizard skin variety that I think is amazing. So that's kind of interesting. I see a lot of them in the European plant tours, cactus plant tours. I want to get just a little bit more tucked under here like that. There you go. All right, what do you think of that? That's pretty freaking cool. All right, and label. I was gonna write Lofo 4, that's so funny. Copia Poa, Hypogea, Lizard Skin. Okay. Really pretty, kind of like a mustard green color to this guy. Really, really pretty. It's bloomed a bunch, a bunch for me. So I'm actually gonna take out just a little bit of this this hair, 
kind of give him a nice little haircut and uh, yeah there he is okay so if you guys like what you see just make sure to tune in every Monday and Friday I generally post um, I definitely talk about all the plants I keep here in beautiful Hawaii and how I do it kind of a higher humidity subtropical environment and uh, yeah if you like what you see make sure to give a thumbs up subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next adventure <laughs>